No Man's Sky is a seriously big game with a lot going on, and as a newer or even a relatively experienced player, it's easy to get lost in all its features and systems. By the end of this video, you'll have all the knowledge to properly enjoy the game, including a super efficient way of earning units and how to escape sentinels every time. There's also a part two to this guide with more advanced info needed once you get a bit further into the game, so check that out afterwards. First and foremost are resources. Many are found on planet surfaces and need extracting with your mining beam. Note how you can mine at the fastest rate when your beam is getting close to overheating. If you want to save some time, hold it close to that region. Alternatively, you can use your ship's guns to gather resources like so. Just make sure you've used your scanner first. If you fancy going on foot though, you can use the melee boost mechanic. While sprinting, a fraction of a second after hitting your melee attack, hold down your jetpack boost it's a much quicker way of getting around. Other resources are found in deposits. You can see what deposits are on a planet by scanning it as you approach it in space. And from then you can see these details in the menu too. You can then use your analysis visor to tag the deposit you want and head over to it. If you wanna save some time here, don't forget you can change the size of your terrain manipulator with L1 and R1 or LB and RB. It's great to save time, but be aware that you do sacrifice some resource by doing this. Using your analysis visor, you'll also be able to find buried technology modules, which give you a pretty critical item called salvage data. This is needed to purchase blueprints for base building or for unlocking the vehicles for example. I'd recommend you start hoarding this stuff from very early on and you'll thank yourself for it later. Also when scavenging these you can often get away without even digging down to claim them. You should be able to just stand above them and still claim the resource. If you're ever unsure as to where you might find a certain resource you can open up the catalogue menu. As long as you've come across it once before you can select it and the game will give you some pointers. It won't precisely pinpoint the nearest example but it can be very helpful. Chlorine for example it reminds you that you need to refine salt which can be found underwater and if if you're on a planet that's not suitable for this, it will tell you to go and find one that is. If you don't enjoy scavenging for resources, you can of course buy them from trade terminals. Your world parameter settings will influence what you can buy though. Oxygen, for example, isn't usually available by default. You can also make the most of NPC pilots that you see at space stations or trade outposts, as their items are usually different to what you can buy elsewhere. With your gathered resources, you'll be able to get straight into crafting and refining. The portable refiner you start with takes one input, the medium one can take two, and the large will take three. So some things you'll be unable to make and until you have the refiner with more slots. So aim to unlock the bigger ones or get by by just buying the stuff you need or its ingredients so you can craft it. I've linked an amazing player made website where you can set the output resource you'd like and it will give you all the possible input combinations to get to it. Very helpful when you wanna check if you can refine something you've already got rather than looking for a new resource. Something else worth knowing with refining is how it often works backwards. So a processed product like dihydrogen jelly can be refined back to dihydrogen if you need it in that form, for example. If you do ever get stuck with refining though or have any other questions about the game, then please comment them below and I'll try to get back to you. Now before we move on, this video has been very kindly sponsored by Surfshark VPN. It's common knowledge that everything you do online is being tracked, but a VPN can solve this problem and Surfshark can do so much more. By shielding your data with encryption and making it appear that your connection is coming from somewhere else, Surfshark stops you being tracked. This can allow you to avoid price increases on things you've been browsing for, such as flights, or try different connections to find the best online deals. That location spoofing also lets you access content that would usually be unavailable in your location. You could connect to a Canadian server, for example, and access the largest movie catalogue on Netflix. The security benefits are massive too. You may feel pretty safe on a home network, but think about how often you use your devices when you're out and about or on holiday. Using public Wi-Fi without a VPN can also be a serious risk if you're accessing any personal accounts, emails, or banking. Surfshark is also packed with features like a built-in secure search browser and a cookie pop-up blocker. Their high standards for connection speed also really stood out to me. Whether browsing or streaming a high-res video, Surfshark could handle it with minimal latency and buffering, which I can't say about other VPNs I've tried. You can cover an unlimited number of devices with just one subscription for just $2.49 a month, which is seriously cheap if you're going to share it with family or friends especially. Using code AGRDEAL, you can get an additional three months free and they even have a 30 day money back guarantee on all their plans. But back to No Man's Sky. Now just about the most annoying thing in any game is this. <laughs> Luckily, you can get more slots for your inventory right from the start. From the space station, you'll be able to purchase a slot over here, and in the anomaly, you can do the same thing also. Something you may not have realized though is that you can do this in every system you visit, so go back to that merchant if you've recently warped somewhere new. If you're really desperate for slots, you can also purchase an exosuit upgrade chart from the space station cartographer. Follow the directions to the pod, repair it, and you'll have earned yourself a slot. 
In your quick menu, you can switch between third and first person, turn on your flashlight and quick refill your life support and hazard protection. The quick refill also works for your ship systems, so you don't have to open your menu to recharge shields or boosters mid-flight. When you're flying around, you can also prioritize power for your engines, weapons or shields by using up on the D-pad. If you're on PC, this control may be unbound by default, so check your settings. Talking of your ship, this game will encourage you to use Starship Launch Field to top up your launch thrusters. Firstly, only top it up if it gets to 0%, otherwise you'll just waste wasting some of the fuel. More importantly though, you don't have to use it. Just over 30 uranium will do the exact same job without requiring any crafting first, and it's also pretty easy to come by. Just go to an irradiated planet and find it in a deposit, or just buy it of course. If you fancy warping between systems, you'll be in need of a warp drive. The early tutorial will have you obtain one, but you'll need to craft the fuel to use it. One fuel type is the warp cell, which needs antimatter housing and antimatter itself. For the housing, you need 30 oxygen and 50 ferrite dust. Oxygen can be easily found from living plants, and ferrite dust comes from very carefully mining rocks on planet surfaces. For the antimatter, you'll need 25 chromatic metal, which comes from refining copper completely on its own. Add this to 20 condensed carbon, which can be obtained by refining carbon on its own or found as red crystals. You can then craft the warp cell in an empty slot and move it into the hyperdrive. This will fuel it 20%. If you fancy fueling it by more than 20%, you can use a warp hypercore, which needs its blueprint, antimatter, and storm crystals. Storm crystals will be covered in part two though, as they're also a great way to earn units. When it comes time to buy a fancy new ship, your best bet is to just watch over a trading outpost, where tons of ships fly in and out every minute or so. Just go up to the pilot and make them an offer once you find one you like the look of. You can come across the outpost with a small amount of luck, buy an economy scanner from the anomaly, or buy and use a planetary chart from the space station cartographer. Taking off from a landing pad also doesn't burn any launch fuel, which can be very helpful in the early game. It's not a bad idea to build your first base near to one. Something else I didn't realise for a bit too long is how each system actually has an independent economy, whereby the prices you get at trade terminals are affected by the supply of each resource in that system. Therefore, if you're selling a large amount Amount of resource to a terminal, the price will go down for the next time you sell it there, so you'll get less and less for it. Luckily, you can get around this in two ways. One being by just going to a new system to sell, or ideally by selling to NPC pilots, which doesn't actually impact the price anywhere. If you really want to abuse it, you can even buy back what you've just sold at its lower price, and then walk to a new system and sell it again. Some resources will also be worth significantly more in some systems than others, so you can buy stuff where demand is at a negative, and sell it for more where the demand is in the positive. Being chased by sentinels is a pretty key part of the gameplay loop, and while it sometimes is good fun, it can also be incredibly annoying, especially earlier on when you're just trying to get through missions and don't have the greatest weapons. If you're fighting them on the ground, you can very easily make your escape by digging a tunnel with your terrain manipulator. Once you've gone deep enough, you'll be able to wait out the timer and carry on as you were, or escape the planet without being chased into space. If some real does go down though and you end up in a dogfight that's not going your way, you can always call in the anomaly. Head in here and the sentinels will be gone by the time you leave. So now on to earning all the main currencies, starting with units, needed to buy resources, ships and also freighters, which will be covered in part 2 by the way, including how to get a free freighter and use it to make some money. When you first start out, the easiest way to rack up some units is just by scanning everything you see you'll see your awarded units every time you make a new discovery. To make it properly effective though, you need to upgrade your scanner at a space station. Head over to this guy here, and you'll see that the scanner upgrades have a chance of increasing the units earned from scans of plants or animals, which is exactly what you need. Get a high level upgrade for this, and you'll be raking in tens or even hundreds of thousands of units per scan. To purchase such upgrades though, you will need nanites, which are the secondary currency of the game. They're mainly needed for upgrades for pretty much any of the technologies in the game. Exosuits, ships, and multi-tools amongst others. An easy way to get these also happens to be by scanning stuff. To receive nanites from scans though, you'll need to upload your findings in this menu here, and I'd recommend using the upload all button rather than doing them one by one. Also, if you scan and upload all the life on one planet, you'll receive a very nice bonus. Another way to get some nanites, which took me way too long to figure out, is by refining a select few resources, some of which I previously thought were useless and discarded. You'll end up collecting living slime, for example, whenever you have to remove it to fix something, and it can actually be refined into runaway mould, which can then be refined again into a nice haul of nanites. Yes, that took me 30 f hours to work out. The final game currency is Quicksilver. It's used only to buy cosmetics and collectibles, which can be picked up from the Quicksilver Synthesis Companion in the Anomaly. If you fancy earning some, there aren't really many shortcuts though. You can do the daily or weekly Anomaly missions, and the limited time missions also reward it, usually in a higher amount. It's a currency that you can pretty much forget about though, unless you've got your eye on some specific cosmetics. While we're on the Anomaly, another tip is to visit these two NPCs over here, as you can actually cash in your discoveries every 24 hours for a nice haul of nanites. So that's everything for this 
this guide, I really hope it's been useful. If you fancy learning more about the game and some of its more exciting elements, then check out part 2 of this guide on screen now or linked in the description. If you have any specific questions about the game, then don't hesitate to comment them down below, and myself or someone else in the community will get back to you. But that's everything, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.